Are you ready for some 40? That's right, 40 finals are back. It's prelim week and I am James Clemens, not to be confused with Neville Bruns. I can actually see how you'd make that mistake. Mm. Ginger legend. <laughs> <It all works. laughs> uh, anyway, this is the AFL Today Show, of course, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. And I'll tell you what, I might need another vaccine because I've got finals fever still. I've got finals fever. He's got finals fever. And joining me for this midweek madness show. Actually, I've got lots of guests on this one. Yeah, we do. We've got lots Everyone. and lots and yeah. lots of guests. Uh, we've got a couple of local weirdos, full-blown footy. Now, nah, some would call them AFL experts. Wouldn't be me. It's Alex Donnelly over there. Just waiting for the turtlenecking to kick in this week. <laughs> Hasn't yet, but it's early. Just Surely very soon. As a Swans fan, I feel like you've just been so spoiled anyway. Like I just... I have absolutely no empathy for you whatsoever. Mm. Oh, that's fair. Like, none. No, Zero. Just, you, and it's like, oh, I've got none for Geelong. Like, I feel enough. bad if Stats Boy's team... And also, North, here's the yeah. Stats Boy. Yeah, how you going? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining uh, me. Stop talking. <laughs> like, if North like, had a massive turnaround, like, in a year or two, yep. and we were sitting here going... And you were like, oh, geez, like, gee, Willikers, fellas, yeah. I can't believe I made it to like the finals. And you're like, yeah, actually, you have I, hope, to root for them, yeah. I hope the, like, the Roos win. Sydney, 100%. I'm like, don't care. <laughs> Do not care. We talk about this with our other guests because we've got some big J journalists on today's show, as per usual, because the Midweek Madness Show, what do we do? We do news ticker, all the big news, and there's plenty of it. Yeah, Nas. And we go around the grounds to chat with all the big J journalists uh, in all the actual sort of markets where these teams are remaining. And guess what? The markets are everywhere. Yeah. Because yep. we have, what, four different states represented in the two prelims, which is pretty cool. Wow. So we've got Lockie McCurdy to talk swans and a bit of the fallout of GWS. We've got Simeon Thomas Wilson to chat power. And, of course, we've got our absolute legendary mate, the surprisingly ripped and jacked Callum Dick to talk all things Lions. We really should have found someone from the Geelong Advertiser. Nah, we can cover Geelong. <laughs> we can cover Geelong enough, yeah. Go get Cameron Ling. He hates us already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. But does. anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get around the AFL Today Show on all your what, podcast apps and all the social channels. It is Aussie rules today on the old facey. But the thing is, can you smell it, fellas? Footy. Finals. Ah. Uh, back. And still going on. <laughs> Let's do it. News ticker. Hey, Ken Hinckley. Is it enough to find him 20 grand? Oh, that's that's a bit steep, I think, personally. Given that Clarko got fined twenty thousand dollars for a homophobic outburst, and uh, McCarty from point. GWS got twenty grand for bumping into Top Papley, and all Ken says, "Ah, you're not flying to Sydney." Sucked in. It was a bit of a joke. I think he probably should have got fined, but like, not, not twenty thousand. That seems like a lot. Did they just forget to like put the dot instead of the uh, decimal point? Because maybe it was twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> twenty two bucks. grand. Two grand max, and I'd be happy. <laughs> a few beers. My yeah. favorite is the just the just the crying and the hand wringing. Would somebody please think of the children and they're like this is awesome it's like every kid is like if my coach ragged on like the opposition players that's pretty funny <laughs> yeah. let's, let's all be honest but like you can see this because the AFL like they run Aussie rules footy basically right they're yeah. funding it across the ground so it's not I a guess, good look I guess it's oh a, shut up I don't agree nerds. with this I know it's, no, I'm just the devil's saying, advocate I, I do see that it's beholden upon, upon them to go ah don't do that. Yeah. But 20 grand, what are we doing here? But also we are in Also the, it was funny. We're Shut in up. the entertainment business. We're trying to exactly. we're trying Go to sell, to, sell tickets and listen yeah. to Sunday show. That's what we've all broken all that down. <sighs> yes. It's ridiculous. The Ken thing versus Sicily versus Gidevin was fun as hell. Just yep. play them in round one or opening round. Just do it. Lean into it, AFL. Lean, get out of your own road and lean into it <laughs> yeah. for once. Just for once. Figure this I've out. Never done that. <gasps> the other good news from the weekend though, well, from the last couple of days. Brucey Bruce. is back. Hey, yeah. Bruce. Hey, Bruce McAvaney is back on the seven coverage for the, the finals. Goat. Yeah, the GOAT. Uh, two weeks, though. Yeah. I feel like we could have used more Bruce in our lives for just the yeah. title final series. Like, what has he been busy doing? Recovering from the Olympics? He was at Flemington last Saturday. He's done for, a lot of racing stuff. He, no, but he you're does right. all the racing. All the racing so he was stuff. back last Saturday for the Maccabi Diva Stakes. So, yeah, that's his number one true love and passion. But very exciting to have him back yeah. because his knowledge is just awesome. Also, not back. Stats Boy's voice. Yeah. No, no. Jeez, sounds, sounds really good, yeah. Shocking. Finally cracked. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Stats Boy. Hello. <laughs> we'll have to start calling him Stats Man. Uh, anyway. But I love this. The Bruce, so Bruce is not calling the games. This is Bruce being back to host essentially the coverage. Yeah. Which yeah, is I think, cool. I think that's good. My point is, why not all the time? <laughs> I. He's got us. He's getting older. Bruce old, goes he? to Europe in the middle of the year probably. Yeah. Like, I get that you've been around for a million years. He's pretty and much I, retired. Like I'm more angry that we've not figured out how to find somebody who can just 
Bruce. Be Bruce. That's true. But not be old Bruce. Because like, it's weird watching like dorks like Waitley and Hutto just try to be uh, Hutto's, crummy, a, Hutto's a legend, I think. Trying to be like crummy Bruce's. Yeah. Hutto's good. Like Hutto's great. Like, don't, like awesome commentator. But he's also like, oh, I grew up loving Bruce McAvaney. You're like, gee, I couldn't tell. <laughs> how do we not have somebody who just has like that sort of level of charisma and charm aura. and just clear yeah. aura, yeah. perfect perfect idea for it, that can just like host something like that easily and that everybody's like, love it. Yeah, we haven't had anyone with that pairing of uh, Bruce and Dennis. We haven't had anyone near that since then, I don't think, yeah. like that. Wait, you're trying that. to tell me that BT and James Brayshaw doesn't quite... <laughs> Although BT has been pretty good in the finals. BT and yeah. Richo, you're telling... You're tra- <laughs> Let me get this straight, that's boy. I know everyone agrees with me on that you're one. You're saying that BT and Richo don't quite... Match up to Bruce and Dennis. No, nah, not quite. Not quite Shocking, to the goats. No. Anyway, but it is weird. Because like, we don't have legitimate commentators anymore. We have either ex-players or media people that we turn into commentators. It's We don't point. have people who have grown up either calling local footy or calling races or whatever else, and then it's just like, you literally call that's sport. Job, yeah. That's why everyone loves Matt Hill yeah. when he calls he, the footy. That's it's his like, job, yeah. He has been calling sport for 20, 30 years. Taps as well. Yeah. So, Paps, yeah, yeah, like that's why, like, hard over speed. Wait, uh, Hutto, Waitley, Brent and Speed, and stuff like that. They're still good. Professional yeah. commentators are good. Yeah. But I do feel like there is also sometimes there can be almost too much professionalism about that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like Bruce just had like this quality of etherealness to like how much he appreciated the game and like the special qualities of what <laughs> it meant. Yep. And it's weird that we don't have this kind of almost mystical appreciation in some of our actual commentators now. It's because you know? the commentating just the, the level of it has fallen off so hard. It's t- too busy cheerleading and trying to create sound bites rather than actually calling the game and appreciating it for what it is. Yep. I'll tell you that much. Love me some Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Other news, Dusty. What's this about his contract to Gold Coast? Superannuation. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be less than 300000 they're going to offer him is the reported uh, amount, which is wild because what was he on? Probably on close to a million. 1.4. At, yeah, one point, sorry, more than a million. 1.4 at Richmond. But... Like you said, they'll give him a jet ski on top of that. I was and say, it all this good. is this is what I call the Andre Kirilenko call. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So Andre Kirilenko signed from the Utah Yaz. It's a soft J uh, to the Brooklyn Nets when I was literally there. Like I think my first year in New York, and it was after Mikhail Prokhorov. Hello, <laughs> the Russian oligarch bought the team. Yes, and he signed for like the veteran minimum. Oh no, the, maybe the like the second mid level. Basically, $5 million per year below his asking, or at least his ideal rate at that point. Everyone's like, ah, he now owns like an island somewhere <laughs> that Mick Allis has gone. Yeah, don't talk about it. Uh, you have an island. island is yours, yes. And away we go. This is what I like, vaguely like. Dusty so now Dusty own, now owns Dusty, shooters. Dusty now owns <laughs> either a part of Dreamworld or like part of the reef. Well, that's how it goes, right? Maybe. I'm the going, I'm going so shooters. Which Sundays? <laughs> well, yeah, Cavill goes. Avenue. Just, yeah, just, like just a nightclub on Cavill Avenue, <laughs> Dusty now owns. Dimmer's yeah. got him a really good hookup on a catamaran. <laughs> like like that. I don't know. Either way, good on you, Dusty. I love a good bit of a super annu- superannuation top up. Other news, Jakey Stringer. Won't be joining Collingwood. Yeah, oh. but then Damien Barrett <laughs> and the uh, Cal Toomey have then come out like in, in the last hour and be like, yeah, he's probably going to go to Collingwood. So no one knows. Who cares? I think that'd be a good this move, is, so I'm hoping is, it happens. This has been the biggest thing, I think, with the Stringer thing. It doesn't seem like anyone knows. No. Yeah. Like, from the very get-go, it's like, he's definitely gone from Essendon. It's like, oh, we're still contracted. But he's definitely gone. <laughs> he's definitely gone to Collingwood. Like nobody wants him. <laughs> he's going to stay. But he's gone! And it's like... <laughs> yeah. It's like one journo's pushing, he's going to Sydney, and the other's like, nah, not happening. And then it's like, oh, come on. nah, not happening. People, some, it sounds like a few people are making things up. Or Jakey String has changed his mind about four times, which would surprise me. Nice one. Uh, outside of that, a little bit more solid reporting is Jack McRae wanting to go to St Kilda. You may yeah. have heard that first on the AFL Today show. Nice. The most St Kilda looking AFL player ever. I, I still think he'll be, a, he'll be a good player for any team he goes to. I still rate him. Jeez. Yep. Way to go hard, stats boy. Yeah, that's, um, he's good people, at football. People are saying like, oh, he's, no, he's think, not that good no, anymore. I, he, he was all Australian not that long ago. I know he's obviously not going to be close to that, but he is still a very, 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 very good player. I think he'll I give think. you... He'll add some depth. Yeah, he's yeah. a handy depth player, bit of quality. Yeah, For a team like St Kilda that could probably use that. And he'll be good. playing every week because uh, Crouch is, he is think it's his foot or his ankle's absolutely stuffed. So, yeah. yeah. Speaking of the Saints... Zach Merritt? That was a weird nah. story, wasn't it? So this broke after we did our Sunday show, quite literally yeah. Sunday night. Yes. Where it's like, oh, the Saints have tabled a massive offer to the Bombers for Zach Merritt. Everyone's like, as if. And then it came <laughs> out, as if. And Bombers like, as if. 
And Zach Merritt's like, like <laughs> as if. <laughs> and they're all out, basically. And the Saints are like, ah, we never did that. What are you talking so, about? So I think it's more St. Kilda putting out into the open market that they've got a million bucks to spend on a good player. Yeah, it was just Ross on one of his burner accounts. No, 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 maybe. but it's more just someone, it just might perk up the ears of someone who's maybe disillusioned with our like, St. Kilda have money. I like money. Well, Merritt has been talking to the Essendon about all of his mates and all of his teammates' contracts. So I wouldn't be surprised if he is talking about his contract, as some reporters have been saying. Conspiracy Jim, I think it's just Zeret's camp throwing this out yeah, there. Yeah, maybe. And like having a bit of a quiet word to the Saints and going, hey, we need to put the blowtorch to the Essendon bombers here because they keep screwing us around and Zeret's getting on in age. Yes. Well, he's on a back end of deal as well. So. Yeah, well, so, yeah, the rumours now is that, yeah, the Bombers might have to upgrade and lengthen his contract further than 2027, but... That's some good which, extension negotiation. Which they probably should. He's probably their best player, but how old is he? I'm he trying is to say. Uh, he'd now? be 28. 28, so he's still decently young. I'd, I'd extend that if, if they... Get him to about 33. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bloke who could fall off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, nah. But at the same time, it's just... Like, I think this is all Zerod's camp, just sort of negotiating an extension. Okay. And just yeah. like throwing, using the Saints as leverage. Yeah. How's Carlton cool. going, Jim? Leverage. Yeah, that's the next one. I'm going to get to the Blues. Yeah. Just settle <laughs> down, jeez. I, I, I have a few thoughts. Yeah. Uh, let's stick with GWS for a oh, second because there's like three in a row. Isaac coming, it yep. seems like he's Isaac going uh, to South Australia. We're going to have that in the show twice. Yeah, that McCurdy's already used that one today. He's yeah, stolen you his line. Yeah, but I said, I, I gave you the credit. Wait, right. wait, wait. Didn't I say this quite literally last week on the show? I can't remember. Also, this is before the interview. You so guys suck. Anyway, you listen to the McCurdy, <laughs> the McCurdy uh, thing anyway. It's that we definitely <laughs> haven't recorded yet. Uh, <laughs> but apparently both clubs have offered him four-year deals, which is pretty interesting. Both South Australian clubs. Yeah. yeah. I think he's I think he's a jet, so any of the club would be lucky to have him. Nice one. Same goes for Harry Perryman. He's apparently got a seven, seven year seven year offer. I think Perryman's actually a weapon. That's a Port. lot of a That's lot of a, years for a halfback flank. I don't know about that, yeah. There's so many big contract offers at the moment for very Does that mean that Dan Houston's point. gonna be leaving Port? Feels like it. Yeah. If they're offering that, yeah, maybe. Go Blues. <laughs> uh, and Nick Haynes is off to Carlton seemingly as a free agent. Uh, he's already basically pieced out from GWS. GWS literally just announced on social media that, yeah, he's gone. Bye. Yeah. I really wanted him at North, but obviously gone to the Blues. It's just handy depth, I think, for mm. the Blues. I think yeah. he's good depth. And sticking so, with the Blues, obviously the big news yesterday was that they're basically like, Matt Kennedy, you're free to have a crack wherever else you want, buddy, because uh, we're not entirely sure how this is going to fit with you in the midfield where you want to play. Uh, we still feel like you should be playing half forward. Uh, well, somewhere in the half forward, one of the flanks, see how we go. Uh, the weirdest one for me, though, they so same goes to Matt Owies. They're like, if you want to go find a contract, He's have at it. so good for you guys this year, though. And Lewis Young. I'll take him at Sydney. Carlton has, like, no back size or depth or mm. anything. This is weird. We will give you pick 20 for Lewis Young. I don't, well, I'd, I'd that's a bit that, high. Yeah, I, that, Blues would you. take that every day. They don't even want him. They don't even want him. They'd be like a later than that, I reckon. You're, you're yeah. trying to tell me I can have picked 20 for like a bloke that we don't want. Sick, done. Yeah. 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 Thing is, so Carl, a, a lot of the weird motivations for this are Carlton uh, getting a, it's just basically a number squeeze. Yeah, because you've got to get the Camperiales in. So the Camperiale bro, Camperiale oh, brothers, yeah, about that. If we're obviously trying to get Dan Houston. Nick Haynes obviously on his way, seemingly. It just gets tough. The Matt Kennedy one sucks. Matt Kennedy is an absolutely awesome dude, legend in the locker room, does everything and anything you ask him. boy. And all he did was get screwed around by the Blues this year. Yeah. It sucked. You know when their season went off the rails? When they were losing him as the sub. It was the That's stupidest thing Or when thing they subbed ever. him off in the final. When they subbed him off the that final, was that just, was the that final was just kick dumb, in the yeah. gut. If I was him, I just would have like taken off the game. I'm, yeah. I'm Switch see you later. Like flies up after having a kid and it's just like kicked in the guts by Michael Voss, just done to headed gear. I would have been like, peace. His see revenge. You suck. Revenge you game, suck. Yeah. You're okay. You suck. <laughs> I'm out. That's how I would have His rocked. revenge game next year against Carlton is going to be amazing. He was playing for like, I don't know. North. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah, yeah but like 25 game. and kick four. Anyway, but and it's always, always is like the weirdest sort of question where he's like the third leading goal kicker behind yeah, you need Charlie him. and right. Harry. <laughs> At the same time, like as I've sort of mentioned with the Jack Martin stuff, like they desperately need that mid size forward. Uh, always mm. gives them a little bit of something, something. His consistency somewhat lacks. <laughs> At the same time, it's good he's player. the best of their small forwards. Exactly, yeah. Mob up stinks, even though he's a legend. And who was the other one? Corey Durden. It's like, there's just, what are we doing? It's weird. Always is good. Keep always. At the same time, it does feel like they've just gone, you go out, do your thing. We're still here. Like, contracted wise, we'll see how we go. Wherever yeah. Lewis Young goes, he'll play every game next year. Ooh, Lewis Young's good. I don't, yeah. Yeah. Well, depend, not everywhere, though. 
He's not getting into any of the top like six teams back line. <laughs> Don't know. So here we go. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, that's all I'm saying. Any other news there, Stats Boy? Uh, I think we've covered it all, haven't we? He hasn't got a voice. That's yeah. news. No, I think, we've, yeah, I think we've covered it all. All right, good stuff. Done a lot uh, there. Midweek winner and loser of the week. I don't know. The big winner the, going into this week is probably the Brownlow predictors. Ah, uh, yeah. They get a lot of they burn. Get a, yeah. They get a lot of burn <laughs> I the was rest like, of where are you week. going with that? Yeah. Like, if you think about like their traffic oh, numbers, tra- yeah, yeah, yeah. massive winners this week. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, what's the Brownlow this Monday? Oh, jeez. But, uh, better have a look. Better have a look. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, have a, give, give a bit of a sneaky look. And, of course, you can check out all the uh, markets, Top Sport. I was going to say, top, top Sport are all the winners with all the multis that will be done. And yes. we'll be doing a huge brown nose special, uh, which will be f- released Monday, which will be very cool. Yeah, Stats Guy and I still got our uh, uh, Horn Francis vs. Butters head-to-head. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. sandwich. Sandwich bet. Can't, Can't wait, wait for that sandwich. I'll, I'll take it on Monday, thanks. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. In terms of the other winners, though, I feel like, I wanted to have Collingwood on here as like a midweek winner or, or loser, just depending on which way the stringer thing falls. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But, we, but not yet. Not yet. But no one knows. Yep. And the losers. Oh, yes. The losers. The Port fans. <laughs> but, Jim, we're in a prelim. That's why you could say that instead of me having to do yeah. the weird voice. Uh, crowd Jim, funding 20 we're grand. in a prelim. <laughs> crowd funding 20 can't. grand for a bloke that you fired last week. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Stop being weird. <laughs> Seriously, they're burning scarves. Get rid of Ken. He turns around and wins them a game. Talks a bit of trash, gets fine. They're like, oh, we'll cover that 20 grand for you. Like, that's just weird. It's just strange. Surely strange. GWS is the loser of the week, completely bottling two finals like that. Yeah, we could we could probably put them in just there. Just sink the boots in. Yeah. And then, the, and then it happened to them in the AFLW. They kicked a goal the minute to go to get in front, and then they, and then they drew the game. It's just a big choke of a club. It's a bad moment. weekend. Mm. If anybody cared about GWS, they'd oh. Just, oh, ow. Maybe there's <laughs> we did have one GWS fan in our comments last yeah. week. Yeah. Now, I do like, look, I love How Prawn Star is up and about this week, by the way. He gave you a lot of crap stats guy. Did he? For riding off port. And he said, uh, this is going to be a great week. So did half of it. Well, 90% of Australia rode off port, but no, that's okay. But yeah, look, I, I love GWS and I feel like they are the midweek losers just yeah. for the simple fact they've blown two fourth quarters. The thing is, there's not that much media attention yeah. on them. We will get to that in your NRs, which will come after that we chat to these big J journalists, which is going to happen right now. So we're going to chat to Lockie McCurdy, all things Swans. We'll chat to Callum Dick for all things Lions. And we'll chat to Simeon Thomas Wilson, all things Power, right after this. All right, now we welcome on. He's a recurring guest, friend of the program. Surprisingly tall, he's got the great hair. We all know him. It is the DT and CodeSports.com.au legend himself, Lachlan McCurdy. McCurdy, how are you trucking after GWS cooked it last week, but the swans are still flying? You've got the uh, scarf on. How are the vibes up there in the Harbour City? Look, just like both Sydney teams that have finished top four, I've got the double chance this week. We've got <laughs> another chance to, to bounce back. But nice. yeah, the Giants lost last Saturday. It was rough for all the wrong reasons. Uh, there'll be plenty to be made of it as the the weeks and months go on. There'll be some soul searching for the Giants. But at, at the end of the day, you, you go up 44 points in the second half. You're up 31 points at the start of the last quarter. You want to win a flag, you, you don't throw that lead away. And, um, yeah, they just didn't uh, lift to the intensity that they wanted to. I, I'm still working on this one, but I'm pretty sure it's because, like, there's no other coach slash team that you want to be, like, disappoint less, right? Like, because Adam Kingsley... I feel like if you disappoint him, oh. you're like, he's just going to bash me. <laughs> oh, no, like, oh, no, I'm just afraid of the dude. Like, yeah. it's just, like, so do you think the exit meetings today are just pure wrestles and Kingsley's just throwing them around? Whoever yeah. can wrestle him, but no. Yeah, whoever, can, whoever lasts more than three seconds stays <laughs> in the team and everyone else is cut. Like, it is, I don't know, but it does feel like the, the back-to-back sort of mental fades oh. and the fourth quarter fades. Mm. Like, how do you bounce back from that, do you think? It, it's going to be rough. Just, yeah, the fact that I think... Their last three finals, one was a one-point prelim final loss to mm. the Pies, one was a goal loss to the Swans where they were leading for most of the game, and one was a five-point loss to the Lions. Like 12 points in their last three finals was the margin combined. Brutal. So it, it's going to be tough. And my biggest concern is that I, I think there's enough young talent in this team, the likes of Tom Green, Cadman, Darcy Jones, and there's so many guys like Sam Taylor's only 25. So the pillars of this team are all set up for long-term success. But... You've got this core group of, I guess, original giants, if you want to call them that, your, your Toby Greens, your Cornelios, uh, your Callan Wards, who 
like it or not, their natural premiership window is always going to be closing because they're all kind of 30 and beyond now. So there's that sense of if those players want to win a premiership, this was probably the year if it wasn't last year. So they'll need to bounce back and find something new in 2025 because it's going to only to get harder for that sort of uh, core inaugural group. It is chaos. I think last last sort of thing on the Giants, I think, like, is it just, like, is it mental at this point? Like, what do you think about this? Like, what is this sort of wash? I, I don't think it's mental. I, I think it's almost... Uh, they finished top four this year after last year's heartache. They were able to kind of bottle that up and go, okay, we'll improve and we'll find a way to do it. They were, they scraped through with a few wins definitely at the back end of the year. They had that seven-game winning streak, but they they stole a win against Hawthorne. There were a couple of this year or there that they were probably lucky to get, and those two don't go their way. They're out of the eight. That's how close it was. So it, it was a good season. It was an improved season, but I think they really need to step back and go, okay, this Orange Tsunami game plan, the back half of 23 – it was surprising teams. Teams didn't really know how to stop it. For the most part, this year, teams were able to limit that. We didn't see the the orange tsunami as we know and love consistently in 2024. So I think it's going to be about, okay, Adam Kingsley, what sort of game plan do you want to take this team forward with? If that's the the handball received, the chains, the getting the ball forward quickly, you've really got to commit to that and find ways to make it work when you're being shut down by the opposition. Because I think a lot of teams were able to get on top of them this year and limit the ways they would attack, limit the ways they could get the ball inside 50. And I mean, to think if they didn't have Jesse Hogan in career best form and the best ever year by a, a Giants key forward, that it, it could have been a really different season as well. Really good point. Uh, did you guys want to hit on anything with the Giants or is that it? Uh, they've got a bunch of players that, uh, well, Isaac Cumming, as you point, pointed out on yes. Twitter, is more like Isaac going at the moment. Uh, he's going across to South Australia. Uh, but also Harry Perryman leaving and Nick Haynes. So it's like not massive losses, but it's still, it hits the depth chart because it's like who replaces those blokes because they've been so consistent over the last few years. I know Haynes has been in and out, but Perryman and Cumming have been there. Is this a chance for someone like Alika Lear maybe? Yeah, you look at him and go, okay, he, he impressed this year. He, he didn't quite get the consistency that he wanted, but also this was his first major year where he was kind of playing a key role for the first half of the season, so he'll be better for it. And I think there's a, enough young talent around the club. I mean, we saw this year in terms of some of their, their draftees, obviously Harvey Thomas is pretty impressive for a pick 59. Joe Fonte, the Fontempelli, came in and, <laughs> and looked really good. Love and the socials on kind that, of yeah. impressed with his, his pace off halfback. But their top two draft picks, Phoenix Gothard and James Leake didn't even see any AFL action. So they're two guys who can take another step up again. And yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of guys who will want to make a claim for themselves. I mean, James Peatling's the, the perfect mm. example. He was sort of on the fringes to start the year, was in and out, was the sub, and, and couldn't quite take that consistent chance. Adam Kingsley essentially challenged him to go, okay, if you want to be part of this team, you've got to play like you're it. You want to be part of it. And since then, he's earned that midfield spot and he's convinced not only there's a team but himself that there's a spot for him in the future and he's more than likely to, to stay at the club now. So I think the Giants are a good team for rewarding those guys who might be on the fringes and take their chances. And yeah, yeah. like you said, with I think Cumming and Perryman especially on the looking to be on the way out, I think Perryman will be a really interesting one because um, there's bigger deals there both at the Giants and at other clubs. Um, but if those two guys who are key role players go... Yeah, that you can look for some of those guys like a Jacob Ware's another one who played a bit fair bit of footy this year. There, there's a few players who could step up and, and, and fill those roles. Absolutely. I'll pay that. <laughs> now let's get to this week's game, though. Come on. We've got a big, <laughs> a big one. one. You've got a couple of Swans fans here, and I do not like this at it's all. Too many. Like, I'm just, it just sits wrong with me. You know? <laughs> uh, but by the same token, like the week off, uh, we already know that Callum Mills is out. Like, how is this all set up for Sydney playing against Port? Uh, Essentially, they're bogey team and yeah. a team that kicked their heads in like a month ago. Uh, where does like the sort of the success lie for Sydney going into this game? Like, how do they get confident? How do they sort of put all that history behind them? A first quarter win would be nice. <laughs> oh, that very good call. Yeah. This year, um, to, to give them a bit of a belief that they don't have to chase a game like they have for so many occasions already this year. But yeah, it, it's a fascinating one. We, we quizzed John Longmire about this yesterday about the 
were kind of Port Adelaide I have over them, but you got to go back to 2016 um, for the last time the Swans had a win. And you, you look at that team, there's not a whole heap of names who are still there. Obviously, you've got a few core guys, but yeah, there, there's not a heap of them. Um, and so you, you almost have to go, okay, challenge the young guys to go, history is one thing, but this is finals. This is the stage that we want to play. And I, I kind of liken it to there's been a, a lot of good narratives for the Swans to almost have their own kind of Rocky trilogy. This this <laughs> final that you've got the Giants who they'd never been in finals before. That's Rocky one. They, they've knocked it out of the park. Rocky two is the team they lost to a hundred points or more a couple of weeks ago and haven't won in eight years. That's two. And then, I mean, if the Cats get through, there's your Rocky four. three, the yeah. vanquish for uh, 2022 grand final. So there's a few demons, I guess, for the Swans to try and knock off here, but I think there's a, a level of confidence. There's a, a level of fitness that this team has now with another week off. And I, I can see Alex getting comfortable there, getting really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I think there's a level of um, confidence that the Swans are in a much better place and that that was a tough final that uh, Hawks Port Adelaide won. And hopefully, I guess from a Sydney sake, that Port Adelaide will be a bit banged up and, and they maybe played their grand final last week. We'll see. I'm just curious as to who Ivan Drago is. Like yeah. that's, that's Rocky Four, right? Because like, I think what is it, Apollo Creed, yeah. Club of Lang, Lang. Drago. Anyway, yeah. so maybe it's just Hulk like, in there somewhere. I don't know. Just like after, like maybe Mad Monday is yeah. there. Yeah. Ivan Drago. Yeah, like, well, that's all. Callum Mills did his too shoulder soon. there last week. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to talk about that. Nice one. Anyway, Alex, let her rip. Uh, no, I've just got. It, it's more so finals footy completely different. So obviously, only played Port Adelaide in a final once twenty years ago it means completely nothing. So. Is this a sort of thing they go, it's a final at our home deck. This history means nothing. We couldn't have played worse six weeks ago, but we are a much better team now in Port. Well, they got blown off the park two weeks ago too. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I really feel that Port Adelaide loss for the Swans was just a complete aberration. It was a combination mm -hmm. of... They had, I think, four or five players out that that was in the middle of this form slump where you could just see the Swans players were a bit off their feet. They were gassed. It had been such a big year to get to the point that they had. Um, and they have built up a bit of momentum there. And that's another thing. Port Adelaide don't play that much at the SCG. We, we had the game last year where Ollie Florin had the kick to win it and just got blocked on the line. That's probably the, the most recent memory of, of those two. But they haven't played a lot consistently across the past six, seven years in Sydney. So, yeah, I, I think there's definitely a chance for the Swans to really put some distance between some of these previous results and go, okay, this is a different beast. This is finals. And the way John Longmire has coached this team this year is to really address each week as it comes. There's there's no sense of going, okay, let's start thinking about the grand final. There's none of that this week. So I think we'll see an improved Swan side overall. I think it definitely helps them having the break before they play someone like Port, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's just that simple idea of like, oh, up to it a bit, if yeah. we're going to play mm. the bogey team, I'd rather have it like off a week's rest yeah. rather and, than like straight into it. And on your home deck with the Swans selling uh, member barcodes <laughs> two for one. So it's going to be a very hostile environment yeah, for Port Adelaide got fans too. a lot too. of fans there, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Stats Guy, you got some ideas? Oh, we touched on Mills. Uh, yeah, what's your opinion who they should bring in for Callum Mills? Just a simple one, Lucky. I think Robbie Fox is probably my gut feel at the moment. Yep. Um, it, it will be interesting to see kind of what roles they, they shift around. I think the key guys who will look out for when teams drop is obviously Braden Campbell um, yep. played as the sub in that game against the Giants was superb. And that was more, um, he was carrying a little bit of a groin issue into the week. So I, I think if he's fully fit, he he plays. I, I don't think there's any question about that because I think John Longmire sees him in the best 22, 23. Um, and so the next questions out of that are, okay, Justin McInerney after another couple of weeks off, is he fit? Is he fit? Is he fresh? And uh, Longmire kind of suggested yesterday that he got through, he, he's gone through a bit of extra work in the week off and this week as well. So he should be looking uh, a little bit better. So I imagine he'll play. And, and then you go, okay, we, we want a sub essentially because you're moving Braden Campbell into the team, those magnets around, whether it's a, a Lloyd pushes it back, a Florent pushes back a bit more and, and kind of covers a Cal Mills defensive absence. And probably the guy who is the most versatile, he, his nickname was the Mr. Fixit of Sydney, uh, <laughs> that Fox is probably the, the most like for like sub. I mean, yeah, we've I like seen that. Adams play the sub role um, this year and he, he was pretty good as the sub role, but is he the guy you want in a prelim mm -hmm. final to be able to cover every single position, no matter what happens? Probably not. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's going to be a big call this week. And um, yeah, I, I tend to think it'll be Robbie Fox. Yeah. yeah, don't mind that bit of Mr. Fix it. Very, very, very nice. Yeah, Very good. Uh, he's, he's the most like for like for Callum Mills in this instance, if it was one of the inside mids going down, you can understand Taylor, Taylor Adams, Adams being yeah. picked, but Taylor Adams is not a defensive player whatsoever. No. 
<laughs> so that's that that one settles it at that. But so you did mention Justin McInerney. He looked as rusty as a he brass set that had been left it. out overnight. So he said he's gone through some extra work. Is there still some slight concerns just on uh, this difference between being fit and match fit? I think definitely, and probably why it was so important to to play him in the qualifying final. Because if he hadn't played that, you almost don't pick him this week for a prelim final. So yeah. now that he's at least got that little bit of game time under his belt, it, it makes it a bit of an easier choice. And he is so crucial to the way the Swans play. He's When he was fit, he was probably their best first quarter player this year, I think. We, we saw regularly that at quarter time when some of their mids were a bit slow to get going, McInerney would be the guy who had kind of eight, nine touches in the first quarter, tried to spark that attack and get it forward. So I think that's a really important role for him to play. If he can attack the game hard and, and really try and put Port on the back foot early, because he has that versatility as well. He can play tall, he can play small, he can kind of play inside, outside, wing, wherever you want him to. And I mean, for me personally, I think that the moment that sticks out on that 2022 grand final run is when he jumps over how, I think it's how, and, and yeah. runs into the open goal square in front of a, a maniacal SCD that <laughs> has just gone completely crazy. That's the sort of energy that Justin McInerney can bring. And I think that's why Longmire will want him in the team. All right, before we let yeah. you go, I mean, just in terms of the matchups, I think this one's a little bit, I don't want to say easier, but I'm like, it just sort of, I don't think the uh, Swans forward woes come to the floor possibly as much as it might have had they have played, uh, shall we say, Hawthorne yeah. or something like that, right? I feel like it doesn't stick out as much, right? Port do have a susceptibility to leak goals to small forwards as well, which Haywood and Papley, they could have an absolute field day on They'll Friday night. Too, yeah, 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 for sure. It's interesting. Like I feel like Port Adelaide's defense can just be rocks and diamonds that you, you never really know what you're going to get. Like <laughs> yeah. obviously, Asava's kind of moved around a little bit more in the back half of the year, but you've got Aaliyah Lear, who the Thomas one, who can look like the best key defender in the comp when he's playing at that elite level or is prone to mistakes. So I think the key will be just really going in with the system that the Swans know that they've played this year, that I've seen people going, okay, no, Armani should be dropped. We should be making changes. I don't see them doing that for a prelim final. Um, and the key will just be kind of withstanding that pressure because that was what was really good for Port Adelaide against the Hawks. I thought they matched Hawthorne's intensity around the ball and kind of out-pressured them and then that their experience shone through. But the Swans, the they put up against an elite Giants pressure. Um, it was, I think we spoke about it the other week that it was the second highest pressure rating of any team in finals in the past five years. But the Swans were able to kind of hold on against that and never let it slip too much. So that's something that I think they'll take a lot of confidence away from as well. The fact that they can maybe not have it all their own way, but kind of control the game still. And if they can do that against Port, if they don't have that early lead that... I'm sure Longmire would want uh, out of the first quarter that they can, yeah, they can get the job done in a few different ways. I like it. It was elite, wasn't it? That pressure rating yes, it was, it was so green. It was just, <laughs> whoa, off we go. Um, <laughs> two other really quick ones. Uh, you obviously were there on Saturday with, uh, you know, fellow friend of the program, Callum, Callum Dick. Mm -hmm. uh, were you as surprised by us, as us by just how jacked he is? Yeah, that <laughs> Like, it's were you done. afraid at any point going, wait, I didn't come to the gun show. I thought I came to see footy. What are we doing here? <laughs> well, I did have to film a video with him post-match yes. and kind of stand him next to him. And I was like, is he going to hip and shoulder me? Here? <laughs> I feel like I've got to plant my feet a little bit more. He, he's got all the strength there on the upper body. So, uh, no, he's, uh, yeah, very impressive and almost as good as he, his writing ability that you can read on the Korean yeah, yeah. Mail and Code Sports website. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. All right, finally, before you yeah. go, who wins it? What's the score? What's the tip? How are we feeling? Uh, well, my tips have been going so well this final series. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's almost yeah. no point giving one. But yeah, I think Thanks. Sydney, they've been the most consistent side all year in a year where there hasn't really been much consistency. So I think you've got to back them in. You've got to back in Longmire and what he's able to do. And I think there'll be a couple of three, four goals in it to kind of, maybe they'll get out to a bigger lead. Port Adelaide will get a few consolation ones at the back, but I'm, we can relax I'm in the last 10 minutes. saying it's going to be comfortable, <laughs> but I don't think it'll be the the narrow, now biting finishes that we've seen over Ooh. the last couple of weeks. Nice yeah. one. All right. Alex, just look at him. Yeah. He just can't I just, stop I can't, he's excited, I, but he's also I, nervous. It's, I don't, I'm actually not super nervous. Like, I know they've lost the last eight, but it's like if the Swans play their best, they will just simply win the game. Mm. All right. Well, I like that you will be turtlenecking for the next four days. So <laughs> yeah. yeah good. Starting tomorrow. Awesome. You can read Lachlan McCurdy's stuff over at codesports.com.au and on the DT. Thanks for joining us again, mate. Too easy, guys. Go the Swans.
All right, continuing our run of Big J Journalists, it is our man, it's not in Amsterdam, he is in Brisbane. He is the surprisingly jacked, as we discovered on the weekend, Code Sports' very own Courier Mail's Callum Dick. What is going on, Callum? How was Saturday hanging out with McCurdy, watching the Lions pull off an absolute miracle on grass? How are you flying after that? Yeah, between fingers, gents. I think every journo in the media box had to uh, hastily run and rewrite oh. all the copy that they'd written, as we, as we all know. Uh, you know, the best, the best laid stories very rarely actually make it to print because, uh, because the Lions do what they did and, yeah, spring a, a major comeback, which was, it was certainly uh, something to, to sit at the ground and say, yeah, I was there. It was very yeah. impressive. So six goals straight, Joey Duckett's kicks the last two. I mean, what was the vibe actually at the ground <laughs> as this is unfolding? You're just Bananas. like, what the hell is happening here? Like, really? Joey Danner is going to be the hero? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he's been our favourite uh, person to speak about <laughs> yes. on the show, hasn't he, throughout the season. So if there's anyone that was going to do it, it was going to be Joe. But, um, yeah, the Lions had a surprisingly vocal uh, travelling base. Mm. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised at this point. But uh, I think the majority of them were sat directly below us in the media box. So we couldn't see them, but we could definitely hear them as uh, first that run of five goals. I think it was five goals in the third quarter. and it, But then even then it felt like, you know, once, once the Giants steadied and kicked the two before... Um, before the, the the end of the third quarter, it felt like they'd done enough, and mm. you know, even at the end when Danaher had uh, kicked them within a within a point uh, with that incredible shot from the boundary line, it still felt for some reason like it was set up for Hogan or Toby Green to have a final say. And, and but no, it was it was as you say, Big Joe Duckett's. <laughs> I felt today's favourite. Full yes. Joe, it, it was full. It Joe. was the full experience. Once we were out in the full, we got a point. We got four goals. Just. Absolutely awesome. And yeah. beating Sam Taylor in two one-on-one contests in five minutes, which Sam Taylor's like ne- never lost two one-on-ones all year. Yeah, crazy. Full Joe. Yeah. It's you never go full Joe unless you're Joe. Simple yeah. as that. <laughs> all right. So that was chaos. Like it's still like remarkable to think about the GWS coughed up another fourth quarter lead. Uh, but Brisbane's poised to be able to go, all right, mm. screw it. Like just throw caution to the wind and actually have a crack down the uh stretch of the fourth quarter is something to behold. I mean, how do you think that sort of that form and at least that momentum carries on into this week back down in the MCG against Geelong? Yeah, it has to be it has to be a benefit, right? Because particularly the Lions have been on the receiving end of some big comebacks throughout the season as well. So to know that they have it in their locker to to flip the script like they did was um, is certainly something that they can they'll be able to rely on if they if they head down and find themselves in a similar position against the Cats, although it has to be said, I mean, is there a better coach team in the AFL than the Cats? So I highly doubt that uh, if the, if they get 44 points up on Saturday, the Lions are going to be able to engineer something. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was thrilling to be at the ground and just witness that. And Chris Fagan, after the game in the press conference, I mean, he's normally he's happy-go-lucky in the press, up, but once, <laughs> once the camera is off, he sort of – he just – He's as a very tense and sort of nervous man is is Chris Fagan. But even after the cameras had turned off, he came over and slapped a few journos on the shoulder and said, <laughs> "Good to see you here." So he was absolutely loving <laughs> it. You know, it was it was definitely he'd been obvious. I think the the chewy that he's um, that yeah. he, you know goes out on the on the sideline definitely copped a big workout <laughs> on Saturday. But uh, he was he was over cloud nine. I love that. The uh, I mean. That's like that is an absolute proper time to go. Hey, young knackers! Yeah. Hey, good game to watch that one. Yeah. Hey. But there is an amazing photo of him just like gazing up at oh, Joe Danaher, yeah. just, yeah, like, I'm now, actually, just yeah. purely like lovingly, just like oh, I'm so proud of you, Joe. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but I think the most important thing, and I think we've we've sort of hit on this on uh, our last show on the Sunday show, that I guess the level of belief for Brisbane after winning a final away yeah. is going to be really important heading into this week, right? Yeah, and I think I wrote earlier in the year, it was after the loss to the Giants in Canberra, that if the Lions were going to make the finals, it was going to have to be, they were going to have to win more games on the road than they ever had before under Fagan. And I think uh, Saturday night was eight on the road this season. They'd never won more than six. Wow. So now if they go down and beat the Cats and then go back down again and win the flag, that's that's 10 wins on the road in a season, which, I mean, that would be that would be remarkable. So in a season of major roller coasters where they weren't the bulletproof team at home that we'd become used to, but they've managed to find a way to, to win on the road. They've added different strings to their bow. So certainly they'll go down there with more confidence maybe than they would have previously given they've, you know, they've been battle hardened all the way through. 
And also considering they've bottled it every time they tried to play at the yeah. day in a final unless they've played Melbourne. <laughs> Stats boy. Yeah, we are uh, talking about, I just want to talk about Will Ashcroft. I seem to talk about him every week. But uh, do you think the Lions are a lot more confident now, even when Lockie Neal got tagged, only got nine in disposals, but do you think their confidence is built going, oh, we've just got Will Ashcroft that can play that role, they can get a lot of clearances and they just have so many options now. So do you think their confidence is built with Will Ashcroft's form over the first two finals? Yeah, I think we spoke about it before this game mm. as well, mm. Will Ashcroft's impact. I Amazing. Mean, he, he's been groomed as the heir apparent to Neil. Yeah. Um, and right now they don't need him to be the guy that gets his head dirty and you get in under and all the clearances and stuff. You know, Neil had a down day, but he still managed to have seven clearances. Still was but good. Where, yeah. yeah, exactly. So where Ashcroft comes in, I think he's just – he's just um, no, he's, un, he's unflappable. Mm. You know what I mean? It's September – it's his second final. He had a great game against the Blues. He's only played like 25 games or something, and he just looks right at home. I mean, early on from the ground, and I'm sure it was you could see on the TV as well, the Giants' pressure was insane, and the Lions were really struggling. I mean, Hugh McCluggage, no, no disrespect to Hugh at all, but he's normally the bloke who's super <coughs> clean, and he was sort of fumbling and fumbling. You thought, geez, if McCluggage is struggling here, then the Lions are struggling as a whole. But it was Ashcroft and it was Archie, like some of the – guys you wouldn't really expect to put a team on their back who yep. got them going early. So, yeah, he's um, I think he had 10, 10 score involvements, Ashcroft, as well. He just, yeah, he was absolutely awesome. amazing. And it's just incredible to think that um, he's only still in his essentially first season, given he missed the second half of last year with with that injury. I also love that he and Kyle Lohman look like the most perfect Queenslanders that you could ever <laughs> imagine. Hair, it's yeah. ridiculous. Like, we just need a movie. Kyle Lohman definitely has a shell necklace he wears during the week. <laughs> they, they, they both, they have matching puka necklaces. 100 <laughs> That's what they call it. Um, Alex. Yeah, so with that, we did mention Lockie Neal. There's got to be some sort of confidence with the Lions that they are doing this without Lockie Neal being at his best. And it's just of note, his last five finals, he's had less than 25 touches. So... Getting a lift from him this uh, Saturday night at, at uh, the MCG feels like a very important matchup for both the Cats and the Lions. Yeah, I mean, Neil, I think he said after last year's final series, you know, he, he went on to win the Brownlow, obviously, but he felt like he'd had a down series by his incredibly <laughs> lofty standards. And I think, well, now we're hearing that he's been battling with the heel mm, issue. It just maybe, seems yeah. like just the, the, the style of football that he plays is throughout the season, by the time he gets to this stage of the year, <laughs> his body's banged up and he's just trying to, you know, he's, he's held together with duct tape and jabs <laughs> yeah. and everything else getting out there. So it's this is why the Lions have built a stacked midfield around him as well because he's still – opposition teams know if you don't put time into Lockie Neal, he could be 50% and he can still kill you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even if he's not getting his 30 touches and a goal or whatever, what he's doing is he's keeping the opposition accountable and he's – opening lanes for your Ashcrofts and your McCluggages and the likes to get to work as well. So he has a massive role to play this weekend and then hopefully for the Lions next weekend as well, even if he's not at his at the peak of his powers right now. Oh, good call. Hmm. I like it. Uh, are there any sort of selection queries and thoughts that are floating around for the Lions, do you think, this week? I don't think so. I mean, we'll have a look again. Uh, you know, Payne got through four quarters of football with the toughest test in footy, so... He won't have to worry. He might get Shannon Neal. I don't think he's going to be going to Jeremy Cameron this nah. weekend. So he doesn't have to worry about that mobility. So I don't think so. Um, yeah, I mean, unless unless an injury, you know, touch wooden injury happens on Thursday behind closed doors, I think they'll probably go in fairly settled. Um, who was it? Uh, Noah Answorth came in as well for the Giants game and he was very impressive. He kept yeah. Darcy um, Jones, you know, fairly quiet as well. So he should keep his spot. And I think Jasper Fletcher did enough to stay on the wing after a quieter night against the Blues. So, yeah, all things being equal and they're healthy, I think they'll probably roll out there with, with the same team that they left Sydney with. Nice one. Mm. Anything else there, Alex? Uh, yeah, just all, would have been asking about Logan Morris. He's a first season player, obviously didn't have a great night on Saturday night. So there'd be no concerns with him getting dropped. He only had the two handballs and a it is his first season. It would be tough, but he's yeah, sort you'd of... feel like an idiot if you put him in a multi. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but he fit, he did get overawed by the occasion and may have cost my anytime goal scorer multi too. But that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> is there uh, a question there? Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. Really I think you're about... just sitting there going, ah, oh, bloody Logan Morris. And that's it. Like, no, no, it's, out, it's, so. it's more concerns, con about, concerns about him. He's a first season kid, obviously. Got caught out by the pace of the game, I thought. Yeah, probably. I think maybe if there was another coach, I mean, and I could be speaking out of turn, you know, mm. 
it might be a case that the Lions decide but, um, that Morris might come out of the side this year. But that would probably be more of a um, what they think the look is that the Cats will give them um, yeah. in the Cats' defence, yeah, maybe exactly. more so. Because, I mean, we've seen Fagan. He's, he's stuck fat with his playing group, you know, before. As I just said, Fletcher had a quiet night against the Blues, but he stuck around and he kicks a goal that helps him win the game against the Giants. So, yeah, there's a chance that Morris goes out of the side, but um, Fagan does have trust in his in his team to deliver. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't shock me to see him yeah. line up and kick one or two. On the yeah, weekend as well. it was good against the Blues. Just uh, saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be all right, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Jim. I'm, I'm going back in. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, here we are. We're, we're, is this the third prelim between these two teams in five years? I think. Uh, yeah, prelim 2020, 2020 and two. 2022 when yeah, they got. That's- Bells it off the park. Yeah, yeah, Geelong have beaten them both times. So what do you reckon the tip is here, Callum? Oh, the Lions. For sure. Yeah, he's been, he's been <laughs> right. Point. I like I'm it. Away, so I'd probably get lynched up here if I said anything different. <laughs> is it a concern they haven't beaten Geelong in Melbourne since 2004, though? It has been 20 years. Ironically enough, it was a prelim. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, history, history is history, right? Yeah. We're also talking about the fact that Port Adelaide's beaten Sydney the last eight times yeah. they've played each other and... I think the Swans are still heavy favourites. So probably the Cats are favourites given they've had a week off and the Lions have just come from this as well. But everything's always said um, with the benefit of hindsight. You know, if the Lions go and win, then suddenly the Cats, it's because they had the week off to end up winning, you know. So we're all really good at, uh, at, at analysis after the fact. So I think the Lions go down there with every chance um, yep. to spring a win. I don't think history, particularly at the G, really matters too much in this one. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, what massive story are you going to break as soon as you get off the uh, call like you did last week? <laughs> oh, yeah. We've <laughs> yeah. 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 Mac Daddy Mac story. Andrew, yeah, straight up. <laughs> Literally gets off the phone. All the, the old dog and bone to us and goes and breaks the yeah. biggest story of last week with Mac <laughs> Andrew. Is it Dusty's not going to the Gold Coast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that one, gents. Uh, what time have we got? I think Charlie Ballard's contract's getting announced at 3 o'clock. So. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this one isn't... Uh, the pot hasn't gone up before three. Or, uh, <laughs> 13 million. That one but um, no, we're just uh, working on a bit of a Fagan piece nice. through the week on uh, on how he's you know stuck true, stuck um, stuck fat with the team throughout the season, and and uh, how it sort of crystallised in the game against the Giants when everyone thought that uh, Jack Payne had to be moved off Jesse Hogan yeah. when he was getting an absolute bath, and then <laughs> keeps him without a touch in the fourth quarter. So, and then we'll have something on. Uh, Will Ashcroft, the the bloke with the hair like Hercules for the weekend yes. as well. Love it. Be good, good Love reading. that. Nice one. Well, the cool thing is, you know, dusting the Gold Coast, that'll probably keep a little bit too, so you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. All right, there he is. He is Callum Dick. Thanks for jumping on. As mentioned, he is the surprisingly Jack. Go check out his awesome uh, awesome video with Lockie McCurdy. We can just see that gun show on full display. It's awesome. Uh, thanks for jumping on, mate. Thanks, gents. Always a pleasure. All right, now we bring on one more Big J journalist. He's from out west, west of where we are, I'll tell you that much. It is Simeon Thomas Wilson. You can see him in the Tizer and Code Sports, all the good stuff right there. He is our uh, recurring guest, friend of the program, and Port Adelaide Power correspondent, I guess we'll call it. (laughs) Simeon, how are you recovering from last Friday's absolute chaos? Oh yeah, no, chaos is the word to describe it. Probably just getting over it now. What a what a night, what a day after that. Yeah, insane. <laughs> well, the good thing is they didn't give you too much to cover. Like, you <laughs> no. know, it was, I mean, the game itself was a laugh. Uh, not much happened after it, so it's all pretty straightforward, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, it's pretty crazy. What was before we get to Ken versus Sicily versus Guinea the world. Sam Mitchell versus everybody uh, versus the media? Um, the fallout, well, the fallout, the the big ups from the game, I guess, from the power fans, like the way that game finished, like the Hawks just coming up short. Uh, what was the vibe with all the fans? Well, there actually were a lot of Hawthorne fans there. Like mm. it felt very like there were a lot of Hawthorne fans there. So they were quite vocal. But, yeah, it just I think it was kind of just bedlam among support fans for a while there and just like – and then everyone's just going, what actually happened given how insane the game was. <laughs> Of like a little bit, yeah. I think at one point I was like, "What actually just happened?" I love that. I like in my brain, I kind of always think of Port Adelaide power fans as like uh, Vancouver Canuck fans. Like if they get into like a <laughs> world, get get into the Stanley Cup, whatever. 
They're flipping cars. Like, yeah. They're burning stuff. <laughs> like, it's, it's on. We're going to just, like, burn down Alberton. Like, it's all it's all over Red Rover. But, I mean, the game itself was absolutely, like, electric. Was that the sort of way that you expected Port to win a game like that, to actually match Hawthorne's intensity and then sort of just throw it back on them and just really stifle their game? Yeah, I think if they had to, if there were any chance of winning, they had to um, just win – the contested ball, bring the pressure, like win in the midfield, which they did. So I guess that's the um, that was their kind of big thing. And also, I mean, especially just those repeat forward fifty entries, like they were in the first quarter, they were dominating inside inside fifties, and they just were a little bit inaccurate, which nearly hurt them in the end. But they were able to get it done. Nice one. Uh, and I guess the rest of that sort of uh, the rest of that game, I mean, it sort of sets them up for this insane Sydney game yeah. where. There's plenty of history there and most of it good for the power, but it's in Sydney. So it's sort of like, ah, well, does that really matter? How do you think that that game and the way that they played against Hawthorne sets them up for Sydney? I mean, yeah, if they can bring that pressure again, like that's going to be massive for them. I guess that's going to be the big question. Like, was that their grand final almost? Like, you know, it was so taxing. It was such a big game. So, yeah, that's going to be the big thing, whether they can – whether they can bring that kind of pressure and, I guess, hunt towards the ball again, which is at the SCG, which is going to be a big ask. But, yeah, if they can, that's going to give them a good chance. All right, let's talk, Ken. Can oh, we do Ken? Yeah, we, we, yeah. Let's we, do Ken. We need to, yeah. We have to talk about Ken. All right, how quickly would you jump in for Ken if he started a fight? <laughs> <laughs> that was insane, wasn't it? Like, you know, like, he just went He went once and then he kind of <laughs> went again and then he just got involved with Sicily and just kept going as... Luke Bruce is getting chaired off, like <laughs> Crazy. yeah, like when the photos are hilarious. Like it's just, it's just, just yeah. What a weird moment that was. <laughs> it was a weird set of moments, yeah. isn't it? Like it is, like the Sicily barking back at him whilst chairing off Bruce is like still embedded in my brain of like just one of the more insane things you'll see. It's yeah. Crazy. It's like why is he yapping? Why is he still talking? And then you see Ken just like with a big grin on his face. <laughs> sucked in. Oh, sucked in. Fly. Yeah, yeah. Fly. Just, you know, the calmest, one of the calmest players in the league. You know, <laughs> Ken, you know, not an emotional coach at all. But, you know. <laughs> He's, yeah, he, but, Sicily had the chance to end his end his career with that shot, pretty much. Where we said he could get sacked and things like that. So, <laughs> then, then that comes back to them. My point is, Ken didn't go hard enough. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> if if he's going to like start yapping at Guinea, I feel like you should be yapping at Sicily, going, "Go on, just kick a goal then. Stop sooking. <laughs> just kick one of two goals. You had two chances. Stop sooking, James. Stop sooking. <laughs> I reckon he should just like got both barrels. It was like Guinea. Bang, Sicily, bang, and then just whip out the old Berettas from behind and just go after Sam Mitchell oh. as well. So, coach, better idiot, shush. Sure, sure. oh. Why did he apologize? I reckon he should have just gone harder. Also, just go, Carl Amon, <laughs> shouldn't have left. Yeah. I'll pay that. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I probably should go back to some questions. But I guess the vibe from all that, like, was it just sort of bewilderment from like media folks? Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I think so. I think as soon as everyone realized what happened, like, everyone was like, what the hell just happened? Like, I, think even Ken, I think even Ken probably thought that as well when he reflected on it. He was like, like, we know he's emotional. We know he has these things. But that, I think, like, the fact he just went again and it kept going, like, made it bizarre. Like, cause normally he has those ones where he celebrates and then he, I think he calms down pretty quickly. But, yeah, this one was like, just went for it. It was a genuine out of body experience. Like, hey, you're not gonna fight now. Hey, I sucked in. Hey, take it. Yeah, he was full blown like Will Ferrell out of old school. Yeah, yeah he was. Where he, he, no, where he, no, where he blacks out yeah. Yeah. during the debate. Yeah. He's like, did I just black out? He's like, yeah. yeah. And you just talk crap to Ginnivan and Sam Mitchell and Sicily and try to start fights. I like, think I like Ken more now I because love of that. Yeah, like, I'm all I'm about good. Ken. Keep, give him another contract. <laughs> nice one, Alex. You got some other stuff. Uh, yeah. So coming in, obviously, in, into this week, we've had. Uh, a bit of talk about Kane Farrell potentially coming back in for this prelim. He does seem like seeing some footage, he was jogging. So surely they've got to put him under some match sim pressure with some sprints and turns and everything to really test it out. So today he did sprints. Yep. A lot of sprinting. No match sim though. Okay. So you probably think he's he's more unlikely quite unlikely. Yep. So like, there's a lot of sprinting. I'll give him that a lot of sprinting, <laughs> but, but I, I guess he probably needs to do match them because it is going to be a big risk for them. Yep. Nice one, stats boy. Well, talking about just ins, uh, yeah, obviously Todd Marshall is going to be out. That was uh, brutal. Just so many concussions that we've talked about on this show. 
does Dixon come back in? Is he is he good to go? Or who, <laughs> just the whole wildness of their forward line of who's in and out is a bit crazy. Yeah, who do you, who do you think's yeah, going to be the changes yeah, there? I think, Dixon, I think Dixon's going to come back in mm-hmm. based off today training. Like yes. he, he trained, he did match them. So yep, I mean he was in the ones. So I guess that's that says it. Like he's going to be there unless if he could get sick again. So. <laughs> and was he really sick? Was he was he was yeah, this just a he, laid out? Yeah. No, I think he's actually still feel, feeling the okay. um, effects from the, the illness he had against Frio in round 24. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's no good at all. Like kind of came back or something. Like, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, just to ensure that Charlie Dixon plays, Alex is actually going to volunteer to be his food tester yeah. Uh, yeah. for the next three, four days. But it'll be like, it, it, this is totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you want to know, but you want him to play. Yeah, I do. I definitely so you want do. It, you will keep eating the food. It's fine. It's fine. As a single oh, fan. Yeah, yeah, but that's what yeah. I mean. It's so right. he gets sick halfway through the game. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, anyway. He's getting confused. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am confused. You want him to play and be fine because he, he's. Anyway, it's all good. You've done a great job. Uh, outside of this, are there any other, other sort of like queries, questions for Port in terms of selection near thing? So, Todd, we hit Kang Farrell. Is there anything else that sort of stuck out? Um, Ryan Burton was a mm. he was he was probably going to play last week was withdrawn from the side on Thursday after he had apparently some weird calf injury mm. where it's a blood vessel issue rather oh. than a muscle issue but he looked pretty good today he was in match sim as well so I imagine he comes back in the interesting thing from that was Jace Burgoyne who played so well off, off half back was back on a wing for Port which, oh really. Yeah, which I don't know. Like that's that could be a weird that could be a weird move by them. Have fun chasing Errol all night. Yeah, I know. I'd definitely Woof. rather have half back. Right? Woof. Uh, and I guess the other sort of like the big story already about this prelim is like the sheer weight of history, I guess, against Sydney because Sydney are Port's bunny team, basically. Uh, how much weight do you think sort of goes into that? Like, even though a lot of that success has come to Adelaide Oval, obviously when they kicked their heads in a month ago, was that Adelaide Oval? Is there much fear? Is there trepidation about going to the SCG and trying to continue that, do you think? I think there's a bit of opt- – I think that probably they have a bit of optimism, like, that they can go there and win. Like, the last time they played the SCG was that that game where Elias spoiled the ball, I think, after the siren went, which mm. got the win again. Could Who knows what happens if they lost that for Ken. But, um, yeah, I, I think that's a bit of, like, excitement, like, or optimism where they're like, hang on, we go really quite well against Sydney. And, yeah, can win at the SCG. Yeah, it was like the start of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, like, so it was, yeah. Like, it was like round three or four, and after that's when they ripped off all of those wins. But at the time, I think Warren Treadraid said it was, it was untenable the week before yeah, or that something. Was, that, that was the week. Up, that yeah. was the week after he said it was that lost the showdown and he said it was untenable. And then, yeah, then Aliyah... Sydney thought Ollie Florin thought he'd won it and Ali had spoiled the ball. Since Callum Mills forgot to shepherd and decided to celebrate. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. What a blast from the past. Uh, all right, well, with all this in mind, like, what do you think is actually going to happen on, what was it, Friday, Saturday? Which Friday one? night. Friday night. Friday, yeah. yeah. Well, so far I thought Port would beat Geelong and then I thought Hawthorne would beat Port. So I'm going <laughs> really well in tips at the moment. I mean, I mean, I, I you'd say Sydney... I should, I should win, but I don't know. Like, if I say that, maybe four are going to win now. <laughs> I'm, I'm generally going to start my own head. I think Sydney probably, if Sydney can rock up, they should be too good for Port, but yeah. it's been a weird old season. Yeah. Nice one. Uh, is there any way that Port Power can maybe get uh, Montrez Harrell into the lineup really quickly now that he's landed in Adelaide for the 36ers? He has, yeah. yeah. He's coming. Yeah, I mean, 36ers, I think, need a couple more ex NBA players. I think they smashed the other. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's what got uh, buried by the whole Ken stuff. 36ers did absolutely smash in the NBA the, uh, the Blitz. That is actually the Ken Furor just completely just like overshadows the fact that, yeah, they lost by like 60 in like what? Yeah, they game. did. Like, and, it's, and it's chaos. And they're just so. shambles, yeah. But anyway, they do have Montrez Harrell, former sixth man of the year, yeah. coming off his ACL. So I don't know. Put him in the middle, though. We'll see. A bit put of a tap Ruckman. <laughs> for the sick hair. Oh, he goes. We try he, to he, pass it like that. Do you reckon he can do right. better than a Sava at, uh, up in the forward line? To be honest, he might have better hands than a Sava. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she'll be right. All right, there you go. Well, best of luck then, I guess, uh, for whatever you end up properly tipping, Simeon, on Friday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, who knows? We might be talking to you next week for a grand final preview. What do you reckon? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? It's the way the season's gone. <laughs> Sick. All right, thanks for jumping on with us again, mate. Thanks, guys. All right, how good were those chats? I'll tell you that yeah. much. We learned a lot from each of those uh, Big J journalists. Uh, we could probably learn more from Callum about how to get absolutely ripped, yeah. I reckon. Just yeah. 
We've got to find out the amount of reps that he's doing yeah. and like what weight. <laughs> what and how, and how, yeah, how much protein he gets yeah. per day. We need like a uh, just a you know bench in here. We can just get yeah. really to work. Just the what, three the, of us. Just all the journalists against each other. No, just us three. We'll just get yeah. shredded for next year. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Get ready for gather round off whenever we go up to Gold Coast for opening round. Stats Sounds boy good. won't be able to walk through doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wide. Just he loves that trust that I like big. It. I like it. No, I get it. <laughs> right before <laughs> we get into yeah now, nah, this is something I wanted to do because I've been throwing this around. Like I, you know how I roll. I love narratives. Really, I love vibes. This comes as a bit of a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to rank, just quite simply, who do we, out of the four remaining teams, the four preliminary finalists, who do we actually want to win? Who's got the best story? Who's got, like, in your brain, when you look back at this year, who comes out trumps, basically, of just going, yes, that makes sense in my head. Like, that's how I wanted <laughs> to approach this. Because for <coughs> me, it's very easy. <clears throat> Four, Port Adelaide, no. Nah, I just... <laughs> Why not? God bless you. Oh. Man, what a stupid year <laughs> if Port Adelaide win the grand final. <clears throat> like, just... It's a very good point. I love your power prawn star, but if Port Adelaide win this grand final, you're like, what happened in 24? Oh, that was the year Port Adelaide won it? Ken got a 10-year deal. Yeah. Ken <laughs> got, got fired, fired three times. <laughs> just a billion times. Well, that's why they're up Koshy's there Koshy's punching on with a cash cow. Like, who knows what's <laughs> going on? And they won the flag. Like, yeah. What? But at the same time, it's what, 20 years since they uh, yeah. won in 04? Number three is Geelong. They won it two years ago. Who cares? Uh, you know, good on you. Like, you've had a period of sustained success. But I think why I've got them third behind the other two is the very simple fact. At no real point up out, outside the first couple of rounds do they feel like the best team. Yeah. Geelong, yeah. You know? They've never so there's like only it. one team you could feel like is the best. That's team. why they're going to be number one, Stats Boy. Yeah, but number two, that's Brisbane. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a fun story. Chris yeah. Fagan yeah. finally gets it done. They last win in 03. Off they go, the end of the three Pete Lions. It's also, it feels like they've been so close for so long, this Brisbane team. They were so good in last year's grand final. In my brain, I can reconcile the simple fact that, oh, they lost last year to the Pies. It was an incredible grand final. If they turn around and actually win the damn thing, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, aha, yes. 04 was when they finally put it all together. <laughs> Even though they didn't really put it all together. This is the year the Gabatoire wasn't really the Gabatoire anymore. But as we hit on with Callum, they learned how to win away. Mm -hmm. And if they do the actually win it, it's because they won away. Away again. They learned how to win away. They win away three weeks in a row. They've and won they'll win two it. MCG finals. It's repeat. Yeah. <laughs> And, of course, Sydney. They are the best team we've seen in 150 years in the AFL and the VFL. Didn't you say at the start of the show that you, you didn't want any success to Sydney because they've had so much success? In that doesn't sound like something I'd and say. And then you've Stats just boy. changed your whole thing. Who do we want to win the grand final? Stats guy, more like fact guy. Come Jeez. on. I was like, sure he hasn't got Sydney at number one here. What is this guy saying? <laughs> I have quite clearly always been about you Sydney. Have, you have. Big Sydney fan here. But do you Me, really want him to win? Huge Sydney fan. Okay. And 100% okay. of a chance they are winning this grand final. <laughs> He's still and I will turn to around. Every year post okay. this year and go, 2024 was the year of the Swans. No doubt in my Okay, brain. I understand why you Best put them Best team from one, start yeah. to finish, and away we go. They're <laughs> winning the flag. That's why I want them to win. But it's, to be honest, in the same time in my brain, it's like, who was the best team in 2024? Yeah, that will be so, the most fun. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. Alex. Uh, quite clearly, I've got Sydney at number one for obvious reasons. Swans fan. Like, I don't, I don't need another reason. I'm a Swans fan, but also... <laughs> The narrative that we talked about with McCurdy finally knocking off GWS in a final. Uh, revenge against Port Adelaide, first win in eight years in a prelim, no less. Last time the Swans won a flag was 2012. In that in that year's prelim, they beat Collingwood. Prior to that, they hadn't beaten Collingwood for eight years. The first time they beat him was in a prelim. And then you'll have either uh, Geelong, which gets, you know, the revenge from two years ago. They got wiped off the park. Or Brisbane, who's a team that's consistently beat the Swans over the last five years. So it's a really good narrative for Sydney as we've said all the way through. Uh, second, I do have Brisbane because it would be good to see them get the job done after so long. Third is Geelong because I need to keep my girlfriend happy. I can't have them at four. You uh, don't need to. Yeah, nah. I'd like to. You want to. Yeah, I want to. And fourth is Port just because I just simply don't care for Port Adelaide. And if they're in the grand final, it means they've beaten the Swans. And also, I, did, I forgot to say earlier, shout out to my barber who plays this show on his TV at the barbershop. Oh, I, I love that. I was in there yesterday and he's like, we had the show on I the other day. He's like, why weren't you on on Thursday? I was like, ah, that's so I good. work a lot on Thursday. That's unreal. Yeah. did not know that at all. That's great. Valiant Barbers, check them out. Free haircuts for everybody. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Stats boy. Wait, Alex just did the same as me. Copycat. Oh, uh, yeah. 
That's I, I've got it pretty much reversed to you guys because I don't know what you're talking about. Sydney, I understand why you've gone for Sydney. I don't understand why you've gone for Sydney. The whole year we've, we've seen Sydney the best win. Team. I know they're the best team, but the question was, who do we want to win the grand final? I don't want the obvious team to win the grand final as a neutral supporter, especially not Sydney or Geelong. Who's uh, He's my just fourth. a hater. I'm a hater of teams that are good because my team's very bad. So, Sydney and Geelong. Hater. Obviously, I've won a lot in my lifetime, so I'm sick of them. I'm absolutely sick of them. I would rather Port or Brisbane at least be in the grand final or win the grand final. Since you've been alive, the most flags are Brisbane and Geelong in this group. Yeah, but I don't really remember the Brisbane ones. I remember the Hawks, Geelong, and Sydney ones. Uh, from uh, The yeah. Swans have won one. Yeah, that's enough. That, that's enough. Same as the Dogs. They've had enough. But yeah, that's why I've got Sydney last. And also, maybe because you just don't stop talking about Sydney, that I've got this hatred towards Sydney now that I never used to have before this job. I think it's your yeah. hatred towards... Alex. Yeah, Maybe. I didn't want to say really that. Is. It's, it's just Alex is, slash Sydney is my This is literally life. because of me. Maybe. And then, so yeah, we've got Geelong at uh, three for those uh, same reasons. Just a lot of success that I'm very jealous of. Porter next. I just think it would be unbelievable for Ken. Like, I feel like Jim would agree with me on this one. Ken was going to get fired every two weeks this season. It, it felt is like. the funniest And then if he wins the grand final, they're like, oh crap, we're going to have to offer Ken like four more years. And Josh like, Carr's spewing because he has to get a job. Exactly. They have to build a statue with exactly. the Exactly. Like, so that would be awesome. so... That is the most fun outcome. As I long think. as the statue is him like doing this to Giddy, yeah. like, I'm all bored. Yeah. Let's go. And then number one, Brisbane, I just think uh, obviously Chris Fagan, awesome coach. Probably, I, I really think they deserve a flag after so many years. Uh, and then Lockie Neal, I think also deserves a flag. You, we look, uh, when Geelong won the flag, everyone goes, oh, Patrick Dangerfield. The greats of the game deserve a flag. Lockie Neal, obviously, multiple brown those. Bont's got a flag. All these guys sort of have flags, but Lockie Neal doesn't. So that's why I'm putting Brisbane number one. They haven't been uh, yeah, up there in a long time, so I really want them to win. They haven't been up there a long They've been top four I mean, the last five I mean, years. Same premiers in a long time. There we go. I feel like I had some decent arguments also, there. You guys have just got all what's the, what's the worst grand final combination and why is it Brisbane and Port? I think that is that is that would be so exciting though. It's a great kit matchup though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do as that. long as Brisbane don't wear that gross yellow one they wore on Saturday Port night. Port to wear prison bars in the grand final. How about that? Let's do it. Eddie Maguire would burn the MCG down. <laughs> right, let's quickly do some yeah nahs. Did Gita Rister away a flag? Yeah nah. Nah. The best they could have done, I think, is make it because Sydney on on their day would have been them. I'll say, yeah, because they would have backed themselves to absolutely beat Geelong, who they've consistently beat over the years, and the Swans, who, again, we've mm. mentioned they had the wood over them in September at the MCJ. They said, yes, we can absolutely beat you there. But of all yeah. the teams that are not in the prelims, and I know we see people going, oh, you know, Collingwood and the dogs and this and that. GWS at their best were at that level. Yeah, fair enough. I think maybe if we're saying throw away a fl- thrown away a flag over maybe five years or something, yes, because all those uh, players, as we talked about in some of the interviews, are getting older, and that's a bit of a worry. I don't know if they threw away a flag, but they did throw away a really good chance of winning. Yeah, flag. yeah, same as last year. Yep. Uh, do the Hawks need to chill on the socials? <laughs> yeah, Never. No. 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 They're the biggest growing this is the greatest in the whole thing. Co- it's the most boomer take yeah. of the week. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah, you know what the horse should do. Is, oh, they just need to chill out. Yeah, and not, not get 100,000 more followers. Giant boomer sooks. Yeah. Oh, it's a bad look. Is it? How do you think kids are going to react to that? You go, that's sick. Yeah. Oh, is, this, is this because they don't understand that people under the age of 25 are no longer reading the newspaper? They're getting everything through Instagram and TikTok? 100%. They don't understand that. They're boomers. Hold on. What's <laughs> what they do? What's that? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's the Twitter for iPad yeah. crowd. That's what it is. Yeah. With, with the extra big writing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. one, one uh, word per like yeah. per page. I love this last one. Does Koshy get? F- does Koshy fire Ken if they get belted by Sydney? He yeah, came no. out. Was it today? Or yesterday? Koshy said it, that they or, that they're gonna yeah resign him. But that, oh. that's just Koshy. <laughs> that's just Koshy saying that. I think just to be positive, and he's fired up from the weekend. So no if guarantees. If there's like a two hundred and twenty point turnaround from when they belted Sydney yeah. two months ago to then that's losing not by hundred or something. Surely. Like, that's when you go, oh, that's, that's pretty bad. Yeah, like, if, if they're down by, like, 12 goals at the end of the game and they have just have not turned up, there's every chance Ken has an exit interview himself. <laughs> oh. I don't think so. I think even if they get belted, they go, we made another prelim. There's one more go around on this Ken <sighs> sort of, like, carousel. Let's uh, see yeah, personally, I'd say no, but I feel like they might stick around with him. Nice one. All right, it is the Midweek Madness Show. Let's quickly look at the premiership odds. We looked at these very briefly on uh, Sunday night show. Uh, at the moment, the Swans are still the premiership favourites at $2.40. And these are, of course, brought to you by topsport.com.au, our good friends, the home of footy finals. Geelong at $3.60, Brisbane still three eighty, and Port still 8 do we expect that to move any time as these sort of get a little bit closer? Unless we have a big... Uh, uh 
announcement as far as someone like maybe if like a Heaney wasn't playing for the Swans yeah, or that's the only reason, yeah. Danger or Jezza doesn't play for Geelong. That's the only thing that I think can switch it. No matter what happens, the Swans go into this weekend as the heavy premiership favourites and then maybe uh, Brisbane somehow get into second favourite if maybe if Tom Stewart's not playing, for example. Right. Yeah. Nice. No, I agree with that. Uh, how do we still feel about the premiership exactor now that we can actually have the uh, the two grand finalists Ooh. there? So Sydney Geelong is the favourite at the moment, $4.60. Yep. Uh, that's the finishing. Yeah, so yeah, so Sydney, Sydney winning. Sydney beat Geelong. Yep. The other one is Geelong, Sydney. That's $4.80. Uh, Sydney over Brisbane, $5. I think I, I like the odds on that one. I it, like it. Rounded, it rounds it off yeah. to $5. looks a bit nicer. And Sydney, <laughs> Brisbane, I just feel like I really like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling Sydney, Brisbane. Um, I did take $13 Heaney to win the Norm Smith last week. Ooh, oh, he's now, now $8.50. 8 oh, nice. So. The other one, Port Adelaide over Geelong at 15 bucks is pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see if they can sort of pull off the uh, revenge The game. 2007 revenge game. That'd be pretty fun. Hmm. Uh, Brisbane over Port Adelaide at 11. I don't mind that as well. Just for the simple fact, like, if you think that Port could beat Sydney. and if Brisbane, Brisbane should can, beat Port. If, if Brisbane do get over Geelong, you'd think that'd beat Mm. Port Adelaide then in my brain. I don't, yeah. don't mind that. And then finally, before we do the big Brownlow medal show next Monday, Nick Dacos is the favourite at $2.40 at the moment. Patrick Cook's really? two fifty five. dollars 55 Lockie Neal at it. $8. Top three. Dacos is far too short for me, but... Um, People are like predicting that he could break the record. <laughs> he wasn't like that. He was it's good, weird. but he wasn't like record-breaking good, was he? I feel I like they won so many more games last year mm. with him playing better. Yeah. Which I is agree. weird, right? He was very, he was very, very good in the second half of the season. He I, could have a bit of a Lockie Neal where he just sort of, you know, scores enough points early on and then rampages awesome. home. I think, yeah, Lockie Neal at eight bucks is is great value on top spot because I think he had a better year than his Brownlee years and and no one's even talking about him. So, yeah, I think yeah. he'll be right up there. I've honestly got no idea who's going to win it and that's great. <laughs> so I think what we'll be doing in our Brownlow show is going through every single permutation of what we can because top sport have... Heaps. Oh, I've yes. got a great heaps top of 10 br bet. Brownlow nice. market. So we will have an entire, entire Brownlow show for you to dig into. What is their team to poll most votes? Who's leading after six rounds? Who's leading oh, after 15 rounds? You don't need rounds? to bet in the six rounds. It's Heaney. Who's leading after <laughs> yeah. 10 rounds? Heaney. Top 20 finishes, top three finishes, top five finishes. The Ooh, head to heads. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, the head to heads. We talked about a couple of those the other day. Most Brownlow votes for a team. I That's can't just, wait. There's a bit of everything. Anyway. Oh, so that's a good one. Ben Keys versus Cam Rayner. Oh, <laughs> because Ben Kiss will get random threes, but Rainer might have ones and twos. Yeah, oh. it's real, I like Rainer in that one. Yeah, I think I'd go Rainer. We'll get any other head to heads you like the look of there, Alex? Uh, Neil and Heaney. That could be an interesting one as well. Ooh, because yeah. I think Neil punch. Mm. punch just, over. just. Yeah. Uh, Joey Duckett's versus Jake the Snake. Probably Duckett's. Yeah. Wait, Jake Riccardi or no, Jake? Waterman. Waterman. Oh, there's two. J Train. Many. Jake the Snake. Yeah. That's who I call it. Don't Jesus, you? that's good. That's his good. nickname, Jake. Anyway, yeah. so keep an eye out for our Brownlow special brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. But that's it for the AFL Today show. For today, we'll be back with the AFL Today show tomorrow for Thursday's teams for the prelims. That's going to be awesome. We'll also be live streaming. So if you want to watch this all sort of unfold live, jump on the old YouTubes. Uh, might even be able to do it on Facey yeah. now, maybe. See what producer Gerald reckons. He's shaking his head. <laughs> I'll just share it out anyway yeah. through the NBA Australia and you can have a look at it on exactly. there. Exactly. I'll give uh, out my tips now as so I'm not going to be on that show, obviously. No one cares. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> remember to smash a like. The hell. <laughs> the hell, man. All right, quickly, go. Uh, Sydney win, best on ground, Chad Warner, uh, 30 points, and oh. Geelong get the W with Jezza Cameron kicking six. Wow. Six. Yeah. Sure. Jeez. Jezza gets off the chain at the G. Nice. Better listen to the Thursday show for actual proper tips and analysis. Aren't you zero for six? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm four from six, Leo, in the background. Oh. Went, four, went four for four in the first week. Thank you. Really? Yeah. That's remarkable. Oh, six. I'm sitting records here. <laughs> you know, for nine. It's actually hard to go. From yeah, six. It really is. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Alex, for jumping on. Thanks, mate. And thank you to the Stats Boy. Thank you. For his horrible, Jeez. horrible voice. It that was is. back for a bit and now it's gone again. That's shocking. All right, get around the AFL Today show on all the socials to see us do lots of fun stuff. What do we do? We do the footy numbers just before as well. Yeah, that was uh, good. Get around on YouTube, Facey. IG, TikTok, X, all the good stuff right there. Uh, make sure you subscribe, star, and like all of our shows on your podcast app as well and YouTube too. AFLW Today Show, the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, which is flying with the start of the EPL season. Uh, NFL Australia, which is cranking after a couple of weeks. Week two, it was chaos. And hold all tickets for all your GG gear. Uh, I think that's it. Get around all of those shows like, I don't know, Neville Bruns getting around looking like a silver fox now. 
Mm. It's incredible. There you go. That dude looks sharp as crazy. <laughs> anyway, Geelong just has a predilection for like iconic redheads as well. Yeah. Barry Stoneham, Neville Bruns, Cameron Ling, Lingy, all Lingy, the good yeah. stuff. All right, that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves. And remember, finals are back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.